Okay, so these are the videos for Unit 16. Now again, because Unit 16 is part of the pink book, which is the old edition, they don't have it really um, easily divided up to be able to analyze. So um, I've put things in the approximate order that they're referred to. At the end of 16, they say, make sure the students go back through the book and do all the homeworks and watch the videos. So it doesn't really help. So I've put them in uh, uh, the closest order I can see. I've rearranged a few things um, because most of 16, most of the pink book we've already gone over. Um, and it really is, we have to pull out the review materials uh, or we have to pull out the few new materials and review everything else if we're gonna stick with the book in order. So it's probably worth doing a quick review, especially um, if you're watching this to get ready for um, ASL 4. Everything that I talk about in here, I'm going to try to keep bringing back to the end goal of um, ASL 4, which is the portfolio. And for the people who aren't going forward beyond ASL 4, you don't have to worry about the portfolio. But the portfolio, as it stands presently at Kent State, is it's your entrance into ASL 5 and then 6 and on. So, um, there are certain skills we really are looking for in there that if you don't have them developed, you basically have to take a year off before you can get in. So rather than take that chance. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, the general overview of all of 16 is we're going to, I'll have examples of the dialogue, same as we did before. Here's some uh, vocab. There's not a ton of specific vocab. It will pop up more and more. Um, but not like with the earlier chapters where they would just, here's a list of them. Now, most of the concepts are starting to come from descriptive classifiers or instrument classifiers. So it's a little harder to define what's a vocab word you have to memorize. So as you encounter things, jot them down. Have a word doc that you can type down. Oh, how would I sign snow shovel? Okay. Because I won't, uh, I won't, the book won't pull it out separately because there are far too many of them. But here's a bunch of them. We'll also go over over um, number signs. Um, general sentence structure is we're going to be looking a lot at that object, subject, verb, or object description and a question. Like, for example, this first one, it says, uh, describe an object. Right? So name the object. So finger spell it, whatever. Then describe it somehow, whether it's the material, what it's made from, or what it looks like, then, sh well, okay, so hold off on what it looks like. So if you know what the material is, if it's wood, metal, rubber, whatever. Next, the shape, size, any kind of designs, if there's a handle on it, if there are two handles on it, is, does it have a cord, things like that. And then last is the instrument classifier. So we go from uh, defining what the classifier is, giving some information about it, what it's made from, then describing it, the DCL, and then last, ICL, where we show how we use it. Remember how when we said you've set up um, how we use classifiers in any sentence, is you have to define it first and then use it, or define it, show it, then use it. So this is exactly what we're setting up. So... Right. So I gave the name, ukulele. I said it's made of wood. I gave the shape, shoot in a little body. Boom, boom. And then what do you do with it? The ICL, you play it. So it's probably horribly out of tune. Yeah, it's out of tune. But So it makes logical sense. You name the object, give some basic information of what the materials are, what it's made from. Is it stone? Is it whatever? Then describe it. What does it look like? And then any other details. Are there patterns? Are there strings on it? Whatever. Then show how it's used. That's the generic sentence structure you're going to want for all of this descriptive stuff. Um, the next question is, fingerspell a word, 
what is that? What is that? What is that? Right? So what? So fingerspell. Simple question of, um, and there's a bunch of uh, mini dialogues here where they do that, where they either spell the word or show the description and ask what it's called. Um, defined by how it looks. So there's going to be an activity later, um, about almost towards the end of the unit where we talk about different kinds of pasta. I'm Italian and I don't know all the different kinds of pasta. I learned what rigatoni, spaghetti, fettuccine, lasagna, I mean, shells. There's, a, okay, there's a bunch more, but uh, far more in this little screen that you'll see than I you know, so whatever. Um, also hats and things like that. So um, it'll be a question that's set up is, hey, you know, do you know, you know this thing, blah, 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 describing it or fingerspell it, either fingerspelling the name or describing it. And then if you know the name, give it, then describe it. If you don't know the name, just describe it. Okay. So that, these are the patterns you're going to see through the chapter. Um, they appear quite a bit, so I figured it's quicker to go over the general chapter before we get to each one. Um, also, we're going to talk about similarities. You know, there's this one thing, but there's something similar that's like this, and you just explain what the difference is, okay? Um, and then show that difference. And usually that's an ICL. So if it's a difference between... Okay, so maybe describing two different kinds of shovels and how you use them differently. Um, and answering what for, for meaning a purpose, for this, for snow. Light bulb just went on. No, you stay off because you're buzzing. Okay. Uh, is that all them? Yeah. Um, and again, do you know what this is? Describe how to use it. So it's going to be a bunch of different um, comparisons between descriptive classifiers and instrument classifiers. And define the appliance. What kind of appliance are we talking about? Objects around the house. We, in previous chapters, we've talked about sequencing. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. You know, once you're done with that, then you do this. Um, now we're going to look a little bit more at um, descriptive classifiers, lo locative classifiers, where they're set up, where you put things, and instrument classifiers, how to make a recipe. So we're going to take what we did in the previous units and build on it with a little bit more specifics about recipes. And then the concepts again, the grammar, descriptive classifiers, instrument classifiers. We go back to remember when we did shapes, we were talking about using your weak hand your non-dominant hand as a reference point. Boom, right? Um, uh, now we're gonna do more as we're building these more complex shapes. We've got a ball in the middle, but it's got a bar that sticks out of it, right? Or you've got a, a vase with a, a cord that comes out of it. Um, stuff like that. We've talked about, I just talked about topic comment structure where we, this is what I want to talk about. Here's either my question or my comment about it. And then non-manual markers, ooh, mm, and cha. I like to say that these are the size markers and the ooh is kind of a lemony, pinchy face of oh, versus like, so we have a right small box, pinchy face. Then a large box, right? Big Christmas gift, or the De Niro face, the hmm hmm face, which is just about right. It's the three bears. Again, you've got Papa Bear, really large, Mama Bear, or Baby Bear, really small, Mama Bear, just right. Okay. Um, so we'll use those, especially with the descriptive classifiers. And then there are pictures of um, the different classifier hand shapes we're going to use for descriptive classifiers. Um, and yeah, I think that's all. I mean, we don't really have to go much into it. 
The first thing the unit starts off with is a video called Have Clock Will Travel. And um, this is the best introduction to the whole chapter. I will warn you again, the videos in this book are fast. You're going to want to, if you can slow it down a little bit, do. Um, I think the, the, the playback thing allows you to do that. Um, then, uh, but we put it in the description anyways. Guy goes to a football game. He's about to go on a trip. He needs a travel alarm clock. See someone who works at a bookstore that sells um, travel stuff or, you know, sells equipment for deaf people. Uh, and so he has a conversation about that. They're going to describe the describe the travel alarm clocks, the features they have, you know, so what they look like, what they have, and the prices. Um, and the DCARA is an acronym for an agency near where the book is published. So um, ba -ba -bum. this is the video. And again, as I say, it's fast, but once you've watched it a few times, it will start to make sense. Um, sort of go with your gut. Don't worry about individual signs. We tend to get, we again, we tend to get lost in, I missed a sign. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on. Just watch the whole story and see if you get the general gist of it. If you don't speak Spanish and you're listening to something, you know, some people talking about foods and you can pick up a couple of words here and there, you kind of get what's going on. Don't freak out. Then go back and try to build on that. Try to go back and like, what was that one moment that I missed? What was that one sign? Um, there's two boxes. Normally what we would do is there's an activity in the book where you would try to draw the two different clocks. So I recommend trying to do that and then listing any of the features or prices or any salient facts about each clock. Um, and I'll put the answers in once I have time to type them. So that was 16.0, Introduction to Unit 16. So I'll put this as a separate thing and then I'll record 16.1.